Hello and welcome back. This is Frederick from Tech Nordic. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, interference hunting and some tricks you can do to capture and analyze and try to figure out if the disturbance is important or not. So we're going to go through discover, capture, measure, analyze and how you save and report and print and all that stuff. So in my lab today I have a, a, a Tetra generator. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with Tetra, it's a, uh, a European version of, of uh, P25. And there's a lot of questions related to, you know, finding disturbances, can they impact our measurement, why does, doesn't things work? So let's start with the, with the Discover. So I'm sure you're familiar with this one. The uh, USB spectrum analyzer I'm using at this point is the 507. Um, so we put this to 400 megahertz, which is where I have some signals. I will uh, change the amplitude in this case, or amplitude control. I will put the internal preamp on, and I will go down to minus 40. And you can see the signal, can't you? Over here. The other thing you do is you can go down the resolution bandwidth, and then you add marker to peak. Uh, and you can see it's a 400 megahertz. Second thing, in this case, we don't need a 40 megahertz full bandwidth. Let's go to 1 megahertz. I think that is more than enough. And here you can see our signal. Next step is to see disturbances. So disturbances we use to discover is the DPX. And we go to the DPX and we just open it. Second thing we will do here is making sure that we, we have a kind of a fast enough I press this one and I can go to preference and show parameter readout. In this case, it's a disturbance longer than 10.8 milliseconds or 10.5. Probably not that good. We can tweak this a little bit by changing the resolution bandwidth and you see immediately the difference here. So we're not interested in the absolute, we will see if something's interfering. Secondly, we go to enable trace 2 is the max hold and we do the same here at trace 2. Just to make sure we have and in my hand, I have a disturbance source. It's called Dremor Professional Tool. I'm sure you're aware of them. I will just power it on and I will power it off. And immediately you can see it's a kind of wideband noise generated. And I'm quite far away from, from the RSA 507. So there's two things here you can do. Yes, first of all, we see that there's something here. But what most people want to do is to see any continuity in the disturbance into something that you can make sense of. So this is why people sometimes use this, the dpx -ogram. And before we run the dpx I need to do some settings. So we have the amplitude scale here. Uh, minus 100 is probably okay, but the maximum is minus 60 or 70. So we have the same thing here, and now I can run my Dremel tool. I do it from time to time, and you will see a disturbance. The disturbance of this case, the waterfall, gives you amplitude versus time. So you can see this is a wide band. It's more than one megahertz wide. And uh, we continue. Uh, by the way, the signal I'm using is kind of a tweak. I'm using a PRBS pattern and just to make sure that it works. So one thing that these people want to see is what we see right now on screen is that is this a continuous kind of disturbance or is it one time off? If it is disturbance as I do here, I just kind of power my Dremel on and off a little bit, and eventually it will give you the next uh, disturbance. So if you've done this, you can press stop, go in here and you can add marker. We have one marker here. Add it over here. And I add another marker, add marker, and we have, oh. I don't know what's happened there. Sorry, we should have, uh, I did something wrong. 400 meg, sorry. So, uh, an add marker to, to center, we should add marker. We have another marker here. And this will give you the time between these two. In this case, the delta time between the markers is like 31 seconds. If I move this one to the next one, I should have 20 seconds. It gives you an indication how often it comes. Um, secondly, if you go for the split one, and you move the, the, the markers, the reference mark, and you move one of these down, you can see exactly how it looks like, disturbance. Okay, so we've seen that there's something here, there's something that might, you know, uh, happen to, to disturb our signal. The next thing we want to do now is try to capture the event. 
As we discovered it, it's easy to set up a trigger. Uh, as you well have known, the trigger bandwidth of the RSA or the Spectrum Analyzers instrument right now, the USB ones, are 40 megahertz, even if we're looking at the span at 1 megahertz. So just making sure that you, you understand what I'm trying to do now. So we can remove the, the trace, we just free run this. I press the trigger menu, I press trigger. And what I will do now is just go down until we get the trigger. Okay, we have a trigger at 70, I go back again, 66, we still have 64, we don't. In this case, I can now start my Dremel and I try, you can see immediately, okay, so we go for, let's put that 60, just making sure that when I just start it now, it's going to stop. We can put it to minus 50, so it's on, and it's off. Maybe even a little bit more, 54, that's kind of high. Yeah. But at least that now we, we're capturing out now. We can put it at 52, we can try again. It, on it works and off it does now. And now I can try to make these problems. Yeah, okay, so I can do it. Second thing is that, okay, if we want to make sure that it doesn't impact our signals, we need to demodulate. So we run what we call a demodulator. And we, if we run it free run here first, I will just open this one. It's under uh, digital modulation. All of you guys, you have 30 days tried, you can just try this. I open it, I tweak this, and I know this is USG, uh, and I think it's 18K. Uh, here you go, and then it should be nothing here. That's basically it. And from this, uh, from this uh, picture, you know, this doesn't look that nice, but if you go for traces here and just go for points, you can see it's, it's okay, it's a very weak signal I'm looking at. So, from this point on, now it's getting interesting. So what we need to do uh, as well is to see if this constellation changed the behavior when we trigger. So we go back to the trigger menu and we put it in triggered. And now when I click this one, here's a good example. You can see that the points are all spread out, meaning that this is probably a fail. If you want to dig into more details, you can always go here, this one, and click the symbol table. So for example, I forgot it the last time, but this is the symbol. It should be a PRBS. And if you look at this from the beginning, there's even, over here, there's even a marker outside, which gives you the complete wrong information. So I hope this short introduction, seven minute video was okay. Um, now we, we measured, we have analyzed a little bit, and we're going to save this as a file, save as, and it will take a time here, and, and we call it Frederick, yeah, we'll look at something like that, and we'll save, and it will ask you what to save. This is also a common question uh, for me, because, you know, we want to have uh, IQ and tie record or here to save. So when I've done this, let's see, I'm out at the station where there, it seems to lose connection from time to time. There's some interference. If I go for a preset now, it's back to original state. But I go to File, Recall, and I can recall this file, open, and it asks me for the data and setup or the data only. In this case, I want to set up as well, not only the raw data. So here we are. Without me pressing Run now, I can replay all. I can run this again, so now I need to run my uh, my little uh, drilling tool, and I think I can make it even worse here, yeah, from time to time. When you capture data, when you capture data, you can always just replay all. Oh, we need to stop, or then replay all, or without finishing, replay all. And then you can look at things like uh, spectrogram, as long as you have the IQ data. This is just a quick reminder, and you can replay. And here you have all the markers, you have everything time correlated, where the issue will be, etc. Uh, and for some people want to just uh, print, I'm sure you looked at that file, there's a print, there's even a print preview. I hope you enjoy this a short video, and there will be a new video soon. Thank you. Find out more at Vicom's website.